Mangita tele lituba logo tingin bingele le nonke eni kona lapa na laba was joina from in dawe zetuge neyo ge kama elite lom sindi suwe tu nom tenda zelwe tu Jesus Christ tu Amen. Welcome. It's good to be in the presence of God together. As usual, we're going to start the service as we light our candle of hope, peace, and justice. And so we light it. God of yesterday, today, and forever, who has given us hope for what we do not yet see and gifted us with patience to wait for it. May this candle we are lighting be a symbol and a lesson for how we can live patiently in expectation of your faithful fulfillment of your promises in our lifetime. And so we share in a call to worship. Family of God, we gather to worship. We look around and see how we have been blessed. Community, with beauty, with friendship, and with faith. As the goodness of God washes over us and we receive these gifts with gratitude, we raise our hands in worship and we are ready for God to reveal new, a new thing among us. Let us encounter the new thing God is doing among us. To this place, we bring joy and sorrow, hope and despair, resources and need, certainty and questions. Let us engage the new thing God is doing among us. In this, play, in this space, we meet the one who parts the seas, creates paths, carries the cross, and changes circumstances. Let us encourage the new thing God is doing among us. And so we sing, to God be the glory, great things he has done.
come, let us pray. God of great love, who has done great things for us and makes a way through our brokenness so we might be restored, we gather with thanksgiving this morning to honor and praise you. We thank you for the privilege to experience this new day and for the blessing that comes with being in the moment today. We are grateful that even as our lives resemble a step climb on the mountain, you make a way through our doubt so we may have faith to follow as well as to serve by your side. May this time of worship and the remaining Lenten period, Jenny, be a period for you to gather up our tears and turn them into fountains of joy. Our hardened hearts into rivers of life-giving waters, our tongues into delightful songs of praise and worship for what you mean to us. We pray all this, God in community, holy in one, in the name of the one who calls us to follow him to the cross, Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Misani Yehova.
Ritlabuisa Palo Yarunzaruna, Yapili, from Isaiah 43, 16 to 21. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from the book of Isaiah. The chapter is 43 and verses 16 to 21. And I'm reading from New International Version. Israel's only Savior. It reads as follows. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out of chariots and horses, the army of reinforcements together, and they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, stuffed like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the desert and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim, proclaim my praise. This is the word of God.
The peace of the Lord be with you. Please share the peace with those close to you. The Easter period is upon us. It's, it's, it's that time again that we turn our hearts and minds to celebrate the miracles of the cross. We are grateful that God has carried us this far. We would like to make a special appeal to you as fellow Bethesians and friends to consider making a financial donation contribution to, uh, to cover the Easter cross which includes the venue for the Good Friday, Palm Sunday, and Easter Sunday, live streaming via Facebook and YouTube. Communication and production, compliance with COVID-19 protocols, the estimated budget for the Easter is, for 2022 is 250,000. Today we will have two collections. The first one is, is the normal one, and the second one is the Easter collection. Please use the regular banking details for both collections. For the Easter collection, please use your name plus Easter as your reference. For further information, please contact the Bethesda, the Bethesda, the Bethesda Deputy Chairperson of the Council, Mamnon Fudo Makaya on 082-509-1738, or the Chairperson of the Finance Committee, Mr. Mukhe Tisilebuche, on 082-465-4115. And the banking details as displayed on the screen. So we will have a song, then we have the first collection, our normal collection, then we have the, the second one uh, for the Easter.
Now we have our Easter collection as the choir sings. Ungulungulu onega singa linde lengosi usi panangen lela esinga telanga gayo usi tanda mwen lula isen isenzo zetu ne misebenzi yetu si zapam guako gengosi si abubonga galolo tando olungu mangaliso na zengosi zipose tu. Zingenye yokuthanda kwethu nokuthanda za kwethu sicela ukuthi usibusise ubusise apho zivela khona ubusise nemithandazo ehamba nazo ngegama elihle lomphelo wethu nomthandazelo wethu Jesu Kristu amen
Madam Superintendent, Reverend Mtsinga, Umfonsu Vilagati, Umfonsu Mabuza, the congregation agree to all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, amen. Our notices are as follows. The first one is our bereavement. It is with sadness to inform you of the passing of Mr. Tembekile Klaso, who is the husband of Mama Elna Klaso and a member of Bethesda. Mama Elna is a member of the Wednesday Maniano and attends the nine o'clock service. There will be a family memorial service today from three o'clock to five o'clock at number 50 Crescent Road, Bramley View. The funeral service will be on Thursday, the 7th of April from nine o'clock to 11 o'clock here at church and then proceed to the West Park Cemetery. Please keep the family and other bereavement families in your thoughts and prayers as we ask Mfonso Vilakati to please lead us in a prayer. To you, O giver of life, we give thanks for the opportunity to meet our brother and know him in the Lord as a witness to the faith. We are grateful for the deep sadness that his departure leaves with the Gaza family and this Bethesda community. We ask that you comfort us, surround us with a peace that's deeper than our understanding, surround us with a love that won't let us go. May they know your comfort, and may his soul rise in peace as he rests in you eternally, in the time and place where there is no day nor night, but one equal presence, no evening, no morning, but one equal eternity, no joy, no sorrow, but the beauty of your presence a world without end in your habitation. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Bethesda Methodist Mission encourages all members and friends to vaccinate, as vaccination is our best defense against severe illness and protects our families and fellow congregants and community. Land reflection services are still continuing on the 6th of April at 6 o'clock, we do encourage all members of Bethesda to please attend, and also it also on Facebook and YouTube. The Good Friday service will be, will be joint second service held at 9 o'clock in the tent at Eastbourne Road, Carswell Midrand, behind Curo. Transport is available from Bethesda to Midrand. The church will carry the cost. So we're asking that can please the members of Bethesda that needs transport. If you're in an organization, Guild, Women's Maniano, Young Women's Maniano, YMG, or a church member, please can you confirm so that we can be able to get transport for the event of the Good Friday as we will be organizing transport and can you be, have the names by latest next week Sunday so that we can have the accurate numbers of people are going because we are going in the transport. So we're asking, can you please cooperate in that, um, in that place of the Good Friday? The Palm Sunday service and Easter Sundays 
Sunday service will be held at nine o'clock at Linda Auditorium, Vets Education Campus, the 20, uh, sorry, 27th Street at uh, Andrews Road in Park Town. Please be advised, there's two important um, things that are standard with Vets policy. So this is Vets policy, not us, but that's the Vets policy. It requires that you either produce your vaccination certificate or your COVID-19 test that is not older than 72 hours. Your ID, your driver's license or passport for identification purposes in order to access the premises. So just to explain this, the VETS policy wants us to produce is either your test for COVID-19 or you either produce your vaccine certificate. However, as the church, we're still in, in, in negotiations with VETS um, in connection with this um, notice. We will then revert back to you not later than next week. So if this is not our policy, that's VETS policy. You know there's government regulations, there's other companies' regulations. So we're still sticking to the VETS regulations. I see Havana did. Are we all together? Okay. <laughs> If I get it, I see a Bethesda event, the policy. Thank you. The Easter program is as follows and will be communicated via all our online platforms. I'm not going to read the Easter program. It starts on Monday, Thursday, at, um, sorry, it starts on Sunday, the Palm Sunday, then there's Holy Week services, and then there's Monday, Thursdays. However, the program will be on our channels, on our Facebook, Instagram. YouTube, Twitter, and it will circulate during the course of the week in our, in our groups as organizations and everywhere. We will see the Easter program. So we encourage that we all arrive early for all the services to, to minimize the delays due to the logistics and COVID protocols. Please pray for our Lenten journey and Easter services. The choir is uh, looking for me new members to grow the worship team. We invite members of the congregation to join. There is no audition, so there's no audition. So you just go and join the choir. No need for you to audition. You can just take the seat there. So please kindly contact Lorraine on 082-690-6873 or Brother Zuko on 082-781-5049. The next foundation of our faith classes will be held on Saturday the 7th of May and Saturday the 14th of May 2022 from 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock at the GMM House, Reverend Rev Njeke Board Room. So it will be there. For those who would like to deepen their faith in Christ, grow their knowledge of the Christian faith and Methodism and, be, and become full members of the Methodist Church of Southern Africa, if you would like to join the foundation of our faith class, kindly bring your details, your name, surname, email address, and cell phone number to the church office or email them to the below email address attached. The 12th annual Bethesda Methodist Mission Charity Golf Day will be held on the Friday the 8th of July, 2022 at the Horton Golf Club, Osborne Road in Horton Estate. Registrations will be at nine o'clock and the prize giving dinner will be at half past six. Please note the following. Four ball sponsorship is 4,000. Benefit is one times four ball. To play golf and attend the prize giving, each golfer will get a branded cap. Individual player is 750. Benefit is one, uh, sorry, is one golfer. To play and attend the prize giving, each golfer will, will, be branded, will be given a branded cap. Dinner table sponsorship is 3,000. Benefit is uh, one times 10 at the prize giving dinner. And then there's another one, individual guest, it's 300 rand, one times at the prize giving dinner. If you would like to donate and you'd like to purchase the ticket, please do, and our banking details as attached above. Second notices. Second finance and executive meeting will be held on the 20th of April at six o'clock via Zoom. There will be a second quarterly meeting on the 30th of April at two o'clock at Alders Gate. We do encourage all members of the quarterly meeting to please do attend. Please do attend. COVID-19 may keep us apart temporarily, but we are all still together. Let's connect using the Bethesda app. 
The networking forum chat feature, feature on the app is a great way for the Bethesda community to post jobs, business, educational opportunities, as well as the needs of the congregants. Any birthdays, anniversary, milestones, anything that you celebrate during the course of the week, please stand and we do celebrate with you. Any birthdays, um, promotions, anniversary, engagement, please do stand and we do celebrate with you. Birthday. Thank you very much. Any visitors, new members that would like to join the church, can we please see you so that we can welcome you? Any visitors? Thank you very much. Over to Mpunsu Vilakat. We receive our second scripture reading from the book of John, chapter 12. We read the first eight verses, and I ask the congregation to stand for our gospel reading. John, chapter 12, verse 1 to verse 8, and it reads as follows. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here, a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served, while Lazarus was amongst those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume, and poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped with and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief as keepers of money bag, he used to help himself with what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor amongst you, but you will not always have me, have me to be with you. Lili Zulgatiko El, Yangi Ngoseng Bawinga, Sigele Litam Sangeli Sukfunda Gulzilake. Amen.
Come, let us pray. Lord, turn our thoughts into prayers. Turn our prayers into love. And turn our love into a life lived with you in obedience to the one that takes the cross, embraces death, and rises in glory. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let me also greet Kumfundi Sumtinga, our Father Tatumabuza, and greet the leadership of this place, mothers, fathers, and brothers and sisters. It is indeed a joy that we gather this morning once more on the fifth Sunday of Lent to continue on our journey and path towards the cross. So my invitation this morning will be just about that as well. So friends, we have read two parts of scripture which I will focus more on the latter or more on the on the second part which is the gospel lesson. I have themed my reflections this morning a fragrance of hope, a fragrance of hope, with the hope that along the path to the cross we will discover splinterings of what hope may look like. We will discover something that gives us the promise and the hope of what comes in the Easter moment. I want you to start by imagining that you are in Bethany and you have been invited by Martha and Mary to a dinner party. And you, you walk through the door, you find the festive moment of the dinner. And as you walk, you are ushered. And somebody says to you, walk around the table. There is an open chair just across there. Go and sit in the chair. And you shuffle, you find your way around, you eventually get to that place and you sit on the chair. You turn to your left and you say, I am Vusi, and the person next to you says, I am Lazarus. And then you turn this side, the person on your right says, Hello, I am Jesus. Just imagine. And then you turn back, you ask Lazarus, Lazarus, how are you? And Lazarus says to you, I am glad to be alive. I am glad to be alive. What, what a privilege I am alive this moment. And then Lazarus says, if you haven't heard, I died about seven days ago. And I was buried and I was in the tomb for four days and they say it smelled. And then the fellow sitting to your right, Jesus, did something and then unwrapped me from that tomb and he shouted, he called my name and I came out of the tomb. And then as I came out of the tomb, I found my family moaning, my sisters, Martha and Mary were moaning. Everything was so chaotic and I wondered because I had just come back to life. I could feel like it smells like death in the space that I'm in. But tell you what, look at me now. Seven days later, I am sitting at this table. What a joy. How are you? Then you turn to Jesus. Jesus, I hear you raised this guy from the dead. Is this true? Can it be real? And then Jesus says, yes, it happened. Lazarus is my friend and I raised him from the dead. But tell you what, it is, not, it is one thing to raise Lazarus, to ask me how I am. And then how are you, Jesus? How are things going? And Jesus says, just a few days ago, in chapter 11 of my story, which is chapter 11 of John, the Pharisees and all of the leaders, the Jewish leaders, told me point blank, we are going to kill you. 
so I am sitting here this could be perhaps my almost my last dinner so that's how I am how are you sir or how are you madam you know and then you've walked into this dinner and you walked into it so jubilant and you you're not so sure now what to do with the Lazarus that has come from death and the Jesus that is approaching his death you're almost stuck between the moment of this resurrection and this death the one that comes out of death the one that faces his death and you sit in between that story and you're trying to make figure out what does it mean to be invited to such a dinner it should be a really uncomfortable dinner shouldn't it you're beginning to think what is going on there should be a subtext to the dinner that i have been invited to there should be something more than looks the natural in this moment but that is the truth of life there is more beneath the surface as always we are wrestling between life and death hope and despair joy and sorrow moving and swinging between these things as we sit in whatever dinners and moments that we sit in we are moving between moments and times and polarities and existences and 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 and, and moments that could lead to the cross and moments that could lead to resurrection all of these things we are stretched between life and death if you've lived in the last two and a bit years of covid you understand what it means to sit in the train in that in that stretched out moments between life and death we understand what that means you wake up the one morning it feels like a, a mini resurrection my chest feels better i feel like i can breathe it feels better you can see signs of hope and you go to bed your chest feels clogged again you don't know how it looks it will feel like tomorrow but in many other aspects of our lives there could be moments when you are suspended between these things so you sit at the table for dinner the dinner gets served and it is a celebration of Jesus and so Mary Martha as the usual you, you know that this gospel gives us prototypes of Martha and Mary do you remember that Martha is the one that that is the hospitable one so there is a hospitality here and Martha stands and then proposes a toast and says actually this dinner is to just celebrate that our brother is back we have missed him we celebrating his life thank you Jesus that you've done this but we've also had the news that you you are facing your imminent death so we are also here to celebrate you maybe one moment in time before anything happens to you that's why we are here and then as the dinner is happening as you can feel the tense emotions of that moment as all of that is happening you are then now witnessing another moment as Ma- as Martha sits down to settle for her dinner you eat and you are beginning to figure out there could be other things going on here that i may not know but there's more than meets the eye and then as you do that the next thing that happens mary stands up mary reaches out reaches for a bottle of an alabaster bottle so as jesus then tells the story backwards she might have bought it for some important moment maybe just to anoint jesus after he died martha stands up at that very table and you we are now told in this table there are probably jesus's disciples including Judas on the table and they sit at that table in that moment and as they sit mary stands up and reaches around and goes to jesus and goes to jesus and as gets next to jesus she kneels down be mindful of the action she kneels on her feet she kneels on her knees and that is a posture of devotion and worship and she kneels and as she kneels she breaks open this bottle of alabaster and then and then we are told the economics of it as it is open it is going to cost you your whole year's salary and then she breaks it open and 
that you anointing in the Jewish culture would be that you anoint the head as the psalmist re reads he anointed my head with oil but in this moment Ma Mary reaches for Jesus and speaks and anoints feet with the whole bottle and as she does that as the, as the aroma of that anointing rises to fill the house just imagine there's been a talk about death and life and then as that happens there's an aroma of beauty and joy and life and sweetness and glory rising of worship and devotion it rises in the context of life and death in the context of imminent death and just coming out of death there's another aroma that rises out of that moment can you imagine that as that happens judas then looks at this whole thing and thinks what is this woman up to what a waste he says and turns to Jesus and says to Jesus, Jesus, why is this? Why would we waste a whole year's salary on one moment? Why, why wouldn't we sell this and give it to the poor? Why don't we take all of this and give it to the poor? We would sell this for 300 denarii, whatever that might be in our current stock, but whatever it is, it is a hefty amount of money, and we would give that to the poor. But John, John is, is sneaky about how he gives you details. He gives you, the, he gives you the conversation, and as he gives you the conversation, he gives you commentary as well. And he gives the commentary that says, actually, actually, he wasn't sincere in the way that he was meaning it. He was just actually doing it because he's a thief. And actually, this guy that is saying we mustn't sell, we mustn't, we mustn't, actually observe this moment is the very same guy that's going to betray Jesus why does John play us so much in our minds John moves us and knocks us across the walls of this house as we sit in this dinner and we're not sure what to do with ourselves let me make a few detours just one detour one detour the first detour would be that sometimes sometimes the moment that judas is speaking to is about the reality that sometimes it is possible to miss what god is doing because the god that is acting doesn't look like the god we expect to act in that moment it is possible to miss what God might be doing amongst us because we anticipate God to be like the God that we want God to be. It is possible to miss God's action in our lives because God doesn't come the way that we want God to come to our lives. It is possible. And Judas miss it because God didn't look like the God he wanted to look like. It is possible. The second detour, which is for me sometimes one of the fundamental things about the church, it is always a possibility that the church could be caught up in pretending to care about the poor. It is always possible that the church could pretend we care about the poor, but actually, actually we, we are making a face about pretending to care about the poor. It is possible. When you look at the balance sheet of the church at the end of the year, look how much it cares about the poor. When you get to the end of the year, look how much was invested towards care for the actual poor. And that will tell you how much we care about the poor. Then let's bring it closer. It is possible for me to pretend I care for the poor. It is possible for you to pretend you care for the poor. And actually, you don't give much care to it. So that, that moment in our very lives, in our very lives, it is a possibility. It is possible for governments to pretend they care about the poor. 
and the poor keep escaping in the policies they create. They keep losing them. They keep missing them. For 25 years old of democracy, we keep missing the poor. And our policies progressively go forward. And we pretend when we talk to parliament and ever, ever, everywhere where we speak about the poor, we pretend to care about the poor. But actually, the poor are still hungry without education, without school, without care, without concern. Because it is possible to speak like Judas. It is always a possibility for all of us. You see, you see, Mary on the other side is this woman who says, I want to be caught up in the now. If there is an act of kindness, let me share it now. If there is an act of forgiveness, let me do it now. If there is an act of generosity, let it be now. I don't want to be planning and doing economics about it for another day. It is a moment that should be done now. And somehow, when you respond to God's call now, sometimes the economics don't matter. When you respond to God's call in your life, and God says, now move in this direction, and you follow that direction, those are the moments that are life-changing. So Mary's action is generous. It is, it is, it is exceedingly exceedingly extravagant she pours out everything so commentaries then say actually watch it watch the mo watch the movement this side is a dinner set by Martha and Mary then this in this dinner it is Martha and Mary that are serving Jesus in this dinner, it is Mary who reaches for the feet of Jesus. Turn the chapter over. And as you turn the chapter over, this dinner that's happening here is a prefigurement of the dinner that Jesus is hosting on his last day. It says, here the anointer is Mary. Next week, the anointer, the one that washes the feet of the disciple is Jesus. So this dinner is actually a prefigurement. Mary in her life has come to the place that the Jesus that I worship, the Jesus that has called me, has given everything to me. And in this moment, because of gratitude, because of the depth of the love that he has seen and experienced through Jesus, he is, she is able to pour out her whole self. So, so that's what some of the scholars say. Mary is actually not pouring out just alabaster oil. She is pouring her whole self into the service of God. And somehow Mary, Mary also even understands that Jesus is going to die. Mary is not even like Peter who says, Jesus, you better run away from the moment of your death. But Mary says, if you die, I want you to die with dignity. And anoints Jesus even before his death. Honors Jesus before his death. And somehow in the heart of the story sits the Jesus that doesn't run away from his death. That's the power of the Easter story. That we are progressively walking as we walk into land to the one that is the heart of our hope in the story. The heart of the Christian hope. The heart of the Christian hope is not a God that would assume violent means to save God's self. The heart of the Christian hope is the one that says, I will love with a humble love that walks right to the heart of death. And I, it is okay even to die. And I am okay to even be led to death. Even the moments that I move towards my death, I will use them as celebrations of the friends and the people that are around me. Have a dinner with friends. Have a dinner with my disciples. Anoint their feet. Wash their feet. Because I want my life, even as it is poured out, to be an act of service to the greater good, to the hope of the world, to that which will remain as a fragrance of hope after I have died. That is the heart of something that's happening here. But I want to also then suggest that it is always tempting, always tempting to think that, that we, can, we can choose between who are we. Somebody say, might say, I don't like being Lazarus. 
because Lazarus is frugal, he's economic, he's, he's you know, his he self-interest, all of those things. I like being Mary because she's generous, she's giving off all of herself to the moment. Mary, I think I am Mary. It is all, even possible for me as a preacher to then project that you are Lazarus, um, you are this. It is always possible. But the, t- the depth of the story for me, is it also possible that Lazarus and Mary both live within me? Is it possible? Is it possible that Lazarus is also the aspect of me that are economic about God's resources, that are economic, that always count the cost when I have to give, that always are calculating in my relationships, that are always doing things that will always begin to be economic about this stuff. And there are aspects of me that do that. And I guess there are aspects of you that do that. That are calculating, that are measured, that don't want to, don't want to do that. They don't want to do that because, and we can say to Jesus, actually, it's a waste to do that. Don't go there. Those aspects live in me. But those, the aspects of Mary, they are those moments when we are generous, when we are extravagant, when we become part of God's mission, when we can be taken up by the now, when we allow ourselves to walk into that moment where God calls us. So what's the challenge? I think at the heart of the movement of our land is that maybe a prayer would be, Lord, make me look more like Mary. Help me deal with the aspects of me that are Judas. Help me deal with the aspects of me that consider cost before kindness. That consider whatever it is before forgiveness. That consider whatever it is before that. That consider, make me slowly move to a place where, you know, the fight between Judas and Mary within me can become a nobler fight that I am more at the disposal of the good than that which destroys your kingdom. Becoming the fragrance of hope, it is when we are able to sit with both Judas and Mary within us and then start to slowly and even as people see us to walk towards the hope. That is what it means. Jesus in his story and in his movement chooses to be faithful through the way of his movement to the cross and he chooses to remain faithful to the heart of the gospel. He loved his own to his death. He followed the path of goodness. Can I probably end off with this? Do you think the Bible uses the idea that Judas was the keeper of the peace just as an economic transaction? Could it be that we are all carrying a purse? Could it be that we are all carrying a purse of God's goodness, of God's goods, of all of the things? Could it be that in the purse that we carry, we can choose how we act? We can choose to become givers of hope, givers of goodness, direct helping this moment and become, help ourselves to become the church that God wants us to be. Can you imagine a church that is the fragrance of hope? Can you imagine a church that in the, in the wake of COVID, as we get out of COVID, that now in a world that's still stuck up in the hopelessness around us, can you imagine if this church were to say, we want to gather every resource that's possible and gather it into this past that we call God's, God's means of grace, this sanctuary, into these people that we call the people of God. Can you imagine if all of us, all of us were going to risk and say, God, use me now. Use me now to become a fragrance of hope for somebody. Use me now, even if I, in every moment, in every dinner that I walk into, in every situation that I walk into, can I become the fragrance of hope in that moment? In every conversation, can I be the one that begins to weave that conversation and gives back to hope? In every, in every conflict, can I be the one that gives birth to an alternative of hope? In every, in every moment when there is even, even, even hopelessness, can I become 
the one that decides that this could be the possibility of newness. Isn't that what Isaiah says in the first passage? He says, the God we worship paves a path in the desert and makes water gush out of the desert. Can you see the contrast? The dryness, the emptiness of a desert. Can you see the contrast where there is just sand that you can't walk in and then the God we worship begins to create a path. Can you see the dryness and the thirst that could be in a desert and the God we worship becoming the one that gives new shoots of water out of the desert? Can you see that kind of contrast? Can you see the contrast of the fumes of death on that table, the fumes of death being overcome by the fragrance of life in the table? Can you see the contrast of generosity in Mary's heart and then the fragility, the way, the, 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 you know, the, that kind of tight-fisted heart of Judas in the same table? Can you see the contrast of the Jesus that knows that I am going to die, but he still gives of himself? So can you see the juxtaposition of all of these themes? Because the God that we worship calls us to something deeper than the polarities, than to become a source, a wellspring of hope, a fragrance of hope, a journey towards hope that always invites people to the alternative that only God can create. In the name of Christ and for his sake. Amen. May the God of all new things be with you. And also with you. Let us offer our hearts to the one who restores us to new life. May we empty them all out us back, so God may fill the emptiness with grace. May our hearts overflow with praise to God. May joy and laughter resound in our words and lives. God of every imagination, 
You made a path through the emptiness of chaos, sending creation to spring forth as grass carpeted empty fields. Trees stretched their branches to the sun, animals curled up to cool pools of water. You even shaped us for life with you so we might share in the beauty and the goodness. But we threw aside all these gifts in order to, sh to know sin and death. You sent prophets to us who encouraged us to let go of the past and to return to your side, but we didn't care about their words in thinking such a life to be too costly. So you sent Jesus to us, setting aside your grieving heart so we might be restored to you. So with those who long to know you, with those who run to be with you, we offer our songs of thanksgiving. Holy, 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 God of new things, all creation honors you with praise and joy. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes to take hold of us. Hosanna in the highest. We may be seated. Though you are holy God of restoration, you were willing to set aside all we had done so that Jesus might anoint us with new life. He could have clung to his glory, but set it aside to become one of us. He could have maintained all power, but became weak and foolish for us. He could have, surrounded, he could have been surrounded by your love, but walked into the forest of our fears to make a way out for us. He could have avoided pain and suffering, but went into sin's cold embrace and to bring back uh, death's captives. His tears sowing the seeds of hope which brought forth the banquet of grace. As we, long to, as we long to want to know Jesus more, as we seek to be restored to life by you, we speak of the mystery we call faith. Christ lost his life so we might find ours. Christ was raised, his resurrection life springing forth in us. Christ will come that we might gain eternity with God. We pray that you would anoint this table with its gifts of bread and a cup of your spirit of life and love, which are offered to the people you love. When we take the bread which has been broken and eat of it, we forget about our past and embrace your kingdom where we share in the sufferings of our sisters and brothers everywhere. And when we drink from the cup, the fragrance of your grace fills us to go and serve your people, the poor who do not always need to be, the lonely who can be offered a family, the grieving who can be cradled in love. And when the past is finally behind us, and when we, gather, when we are gathered in the new Jerusalem with our sisters and brothers and of every time and place, we will join our hands around your feast and sing your praises from the depths of the hearts, God in community, holy in one. Amen.
Christ is inviting us with a welcoming voice. All things have been set, my friends. Come and share with me. The table is ready. We come in faith, knowing we accepted and loved. Oh, we will, as we prepare to come, we will have two stations, one at the front and one at the back. I ask that the stewards prepare accordingly. We'll also have our poor fund collection, which is a fund that is always used for those that are poor amongst us. So come, the table is ready.
say together, we thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in the sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all people. Amen. There's one special notice that's coming um, now, so we're waiting for one of the stewards to help us. Please be seated for a second. Greetings to Mfundisi, Mfundisi Vitwala Pekaya. Greetings to all those who are watching at home and greetings to the congregation at large. Our special Easter notice reads as follows. There has been a request by various members of the church that they need to see the breakdown of the Easter cost. It is as follows. There is a Bethesda contribution to a joint second cost of 70,000. As we all know that our Easter for the first time is going to be a joint one, which will be held at Calvary. There is also a hire of the Linde Auditorium for two Sundays at 90,000. The Linde Auditorium for the two Sundays being the Palm Sunday, which is next uh, Sunday, and also the Easter Sunday, hence two Sundays. That one is not a combined one, it's not a second one. The second one is only pertains to the Easter Friday. There's also the hire of audio equipment set up and streaming for also the two Sundays, which comes to 86,000. We also would have, as you all know, that we'll have two visitors, ministers, with their airfare, accommodation, meals, and gratuities at 25,000. There also is a bus transport to Midrand for the Good Friday service at 10,000 rand. The total estimated cost is 281,000. There are also two very important things to note for the Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday services, which will be held at the Vetslin Auditorium, a vaccine certificate or a negative COVID test that is not older than 72 hours is required, an ID and a driver's license or passport for identification purposes in order to access the premises at Linde Auditorium. We are, however, negotiating with VETS to align with government requirements of no vaccine certificates for audiences that are less than 1,000 people indoors. We will report back to the congregation via our communication channels early next week regarding the outcome of the negotiations. We ask congregants to also have e data on their phones for the online screening process as you enter Linde Auditorium. It is one of their policy requirements that as you enter the date, it's a normal thing like when last were you ever tested for COVID and had you had cough, it's just that it's gonna come immediately via SMS on your phone. So hence, a little bit of data is required on your phone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gosa. We now conclude our service. Let's stand together. And now God sends us out into our communities. And now Jesus calls us to notice those around us. And now the Spirit anoints us with grace. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace and the Lord of peace be with you.